This is Beyond the Uniform with TJ Brassel. Welcome into another episode of Beyond the Uniform. I'm your host, TJ Brassel, and if you're watching on the YouTube channel, as you can see, things look a little bit different today as I'm not immediately joined by my guest. So let me explain to you why. This season has been a little different. I've been changing things up on you a little bit, doing some special edition episodes, getting off of the track, and talking with other Olympic athletes about their stories. Most of them have been aquatic sport athletes. That has not been planned. That just kind of happened that way. This episode, while not a full special edition episode, is still a little bit different in the fact that while it's still track and field, it, I am not talking with any current professional athletes. They're all current uh, student athletes for the University of Oregon track and field team. And how this kind of all came about was I was asked to do an interview uh, with some Oregon student athletes for Track Town Tuesday for Track Town USA. Now, Track Town USA is a nonprofit organization uh, that's their mission is essentially to to improve, to spread uh, the sport of track and field, and to really to inspire the next generation. So they have they bring a lot of events to the United States and more specifically to Eugene, Oregon, such as the 2014 World Junior Championships, um, USA Track and Field Championships, as well as the Olympic Trials uh, and the upcoming. 2022 World Championships will be held in Eugene, Oregon. And so Track Town Tuesday is, is once a month and they kind of, it's essentially a town hall, um, but they also do a lot of interviews. They bring in a lot of uh, various people, various student athletes, various track athletes, and they do interviews with them. So in June, uh, with COVID-19, they could not hold that. So they did a socially distanced episode and I was lucky enough to uh, be the interviewer f with a few of Oregon track and field athletes. I was an Oregon track and field athlete for everyone that doesn't know from 2013 to 2017. I was a thrower uh, and I was lucky enough to be joined in this episode by one of my former teammates, Max Lightham. Uh, I will introduce everyone momentarily as we get this episode started, but that's how it start. That's how this episode came about. It is a few weeks old and uh, I hope you enjoy. I'm joined today by three current ducks. We're spanning all across the team. We got distance, we got jumps, we got throws. We got Carmela Cardama Baez, Lexi Ellis, and Max Lightham. Thank you guys for, for talking with me. Thanks for having us. Thank you. <laughs> of course. And so I know everyone wants to talk about the new stadium and how excited everyone is about it. And we'll get to that. I know everyone wants to hear about it, so we'll get there, I promise. But I want to rewind a little bit. I want to start with the out or the indoor track and field champs and how you guys were like on the track when those got canceled like you guys you guys weren't in the hotel like waiting around and just kind of like figuring out things you're like you were warming up for nationals when the nba is getting canceled and the conference championships and men's basketball are getting canceled so lexi when everything like started to get canceled like how did you guys find out like Oh, just kidding. There's no more indoor track and field championships. And what was that scene like? Um, well, we, so the day that we found out was the day that we were doing our pre-meet stuff. And that morning, uh, we were getting ready to leave for like just a grocery store trip. And, um, I remember I was with like, you know, a smaller group of people. It wasn't everybody, but we were leaving to go to the grocery store and we kept hearing ACC is pulling out. Harvard's not coming. Ivy League schools aren't coming. And we were like joking. Like we were laughing at it, basically. And then we got to the hotel and then all of a sudden more conferences are pulling out and we're just sitting in the hotel room like, are you, are you joking? Like, is this, this is really happening? So it went from, you know, making jokes out of it to, oh, this is, this is serious. <laughs> to getting to the meet and everybody being like, why are we here? It's literally going to get canceled while we're here. And then it got canceled while we were there. <laughs> what was, what was that like scene like at, at the championships when every, everyone finds out like there's no more? Uh, it was very sad <laughs> because when we got to the track, nobody was saying anything. Nobody on the team was really talking to each other. Uh, we went and we sat down and then we watched as literally all of the other teams were doing their premium already. And so there were some teams that were already on the track, already on the infield, and no one was talking. Like everyone was just doing their premium, going through the motions, but you couldn't hear barely any conversations happening. That's wild. Now, I mean, I'd been hear hearing some rumblings going into the indoor nationals that like, no surprise here, but like the Ducks were kind of, were poised to kind of make 
make a big run and that some people were going to have some like some surprise performances and there was a lot of excitement going around and Carmela I know you were killing it this year like you broke the indoor 5k record set by Jordan Hesse by like nearly 15 seconds which is just unreal to me but so like post indoors like the spring sports hadn't been canceled yet so like there's still kind of that hope what was what were you guys thinking what was like the team's thought about the chances of like there still being an outdoor season and hope towards that yeah i think that um we knew the outdoor system was going to be canceled as soon as we as soon as they told us that indoor had already been canceled um so i think that um uh, helen tried to keep us like pumped up saying like pac 12 hasn't decided yet like these things might still happen but i think that uh we pretty much like already knew like that was that was not going to be an option there's not going to be a competition like in the next three months and we really had to like set new goals and kind of like rethink the whole the whole season and the whole situation yeah now max when you found out that like the season's canceled like your senior season your senior outdoor season is done like how did you find out and what went through your mind when you when you heard all about that well, I wasn't at Nationals. I was in Eugene. We were about to train over at Lane Community College. We were just getting ready for a throwing session. And um, when, when we got that news and, you know, it was one of those things just like Lexi and Carmela are saying, or like, just like Lexi's story about the scene there at Nationals, just this kind of numbness, you know, just this kind of not being able to talk and, and stuff. And what our group did, it was Maddie Rabing, Austin Tharp, and myself. And we just did our throwing session that day. And in that moment, we just pretended like we were just in the, you know, <laughs> in the middle of it still, still preparing to get ready for spring break and, and, and for this outdoor campaign. And we just threw and we, talk, and we talked about technique and we did all these things. And we just kind of were in that moment for a second. And then it started settling in that, you know, this is gonna be, you know, it's, this, this isn't gonna happen. And, certainly emotions arose out of everyone at that point um but we were we were all we're all older people people who had been part of the team for several years and we were what we spent it doing was just talking about some of the memories that we've had so far as part of Oregon track and field some of the special memories um and that was a nice thing to do on that day to kind of let it settle in absolutely now the NCAA then obviously went on to say how spring sports will get that season back and so seniors who miss that who miss that outdoor season like now get that season back Carmela Max you were both you were both seniors so Carmela for you I mean you're from Spain you're a long way away from home so on deciding like to come back for that senior season how difficult was that decision yeah it was really hard because there's just so many things that play around and coming back or not coming back. And um, it has been a long process of like uncertainties and really figuring out how that would play. Um, but I, I, I knew whether it would work out or not, like the minute we were at indoors and the season got canceled, uh, before as, Ma as 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 Max said, like the whole like the whole process settled in. Um, I remember feeling like if this is it, I'm okay with it. Like it was really being like okay, like I've literally given my best, and until now, and like if this is the end, I'm okay with it. Like I obviously want to have my outer season, and and I had a lot of goals for scoring for the team and and getting the team title. But if that was it, I was, I was uh, relieved and I was okay with it. So um, it has been a process of being okay, like if it happens or not, um, I'm going to be okay, like whether I get to come back or not. Uh, but at the end, I'm coming back. So yeah, <laughs> that is really exciting. And it, it definitely feels like a gift. Uh, yeah, just, I feel like Oregon has given me so much and it just feels like over the top. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. That is, that's really exciting. And now, Max, similar question for you, but difference is like, you're from Oregon, so you're not from Spain, but you're, so you're, you're, a li you're a little closer, but at, at the same time, like you still, all your post-grad plans, all your post-collegiate plans, like 
they're kind of now put on hold to now wait an extra right. year. So right. what led to that decision for you to decide, you know what, I'm going to put those on hold and I'm going to come back? Well, to Carmela's point about how much work, it, you know, we've done over the past few years, um, that's kind of what I weighed and calculated. The amount of the volume of work that we've done over the last few years is immense. And what our university and what the NCA is offering us is the chance to kind of get some closure and kind of finalize that and really have it be a culmination of all of that work. And so what I, my thought process was, if that opportunity exists, let's embrace it and, and go for it and you know, use that chance to really finalize that work. And from the lens of being an Oregonian, you know, when you're growing, when you're, when you're in Oregon and you're going to your state meet at Hayward Field, at old Hayward Field, and, and being part of that magic, you know, there's thousands of thousands of kids in the state of Oregon and everywhere, but in the state of Oregon, who would just do anything for a chance to be part of it for a day, you know, and I've been a part of it for five years and now we're going, now we're going for six and it's like, uh, just amazing, just to, just to Carmela's point. And so there's no way I could turn down the opportunity of being a part of it for another year because it's such a special opportunity. And so that was my thought process. Absolutely. The rare sixth year senior, you, you, love, you love to see it. Um, right. Now, Lexi, I mean, so you were a sophomore, so you still had eligibility and years remaining when all of this was happening. But when you see your seniors who are like putting their kind of their life on hold to come back and have this one more season with, with the team. What does that tell you about this Oregon track and field team and about like the culture around this team? Um, it's definitely a team oriented mindset for sure, because I know a lot of the seniors, they were gunning for, you know, putting the team on their back, especially with like relays and stuff coming up outdoor season. Uh, they, you know, they wanted to get some work done on the track, especially now that there's a new Hayward. But um, I think it just goes to show the, the grit that everybody has, especially the seniors. Absolutely. And I must say, like, I'm pretty sure a brand new, amazing stadium, like, probably helped ease that decision, like, a oh, tiny sure. bit. <laughs> um, and with that said, so we actually have a video to show you guys of – some footage of the new Hayward. So we're gonna, we're gonna show that to you right now and then, and then we'll talk a little bit about that afterwards. That was really cool for me. I don't, I don't know what y'all think, but that, that was, that was amazing. Um, that got me hyped, but okay. So after seeing that Lexi, you, so the other Max and Carmela, they, they got a chance to compete as ducks at Hayward. You came in after everything was kind of already underway. So you didn't get that chance to compete as a duck at Hayward field. What does it mean to you to now be a part of the first team to compete at the new Hayward field? It's insane. I can't even put into words like how excited I am to compete as a duck in front of duck fans. It doesn't even have, I mean, obviously, yes, Hayward Field, you know, is insanely beautiful. But at the end of the day, the fans is what make it fun. And so 
being able to compete in front of the Duck fans in that cool of a stadium is mind boggling. I mean, seeing videos like that, like it just gives you chills. Like it just, it, it makes the hype even more. And like, there's so much anticipation around it. So many people want to see this and they've been trying to get in and talking to coaches and everything like, Hey, can we see this? Like da, da, da. Max, when you hear coach Johnson talking about how he's, he's been very adamant that no one from the public will see the stadium until the team does that he I've heard it described as like he wants that like Christmas morning feel like he wants right. everyone to be able to walk in and kind of un, unwrap this this new present and just be like just kind of get a get to experience it all at once what does that mean to the team that he's being so adamant that no one's seeing this until you guys do right I think what that means is that this amazing facility is first and foremost a University of Oregon facility and to its core, it, it, and you can see that stylistically woven into the whole, you know, facility, into the whole stadium, and the, and the amount of details that are about signaling this immense history of Oregon track and field is really staggering, and so I think that's, and, and Coach Johnson is in continuity with that tradition that leads all the way back to, you know, Bowerman and, and Hayward, you know, he's, he's joined that, that tradition, and so this is, it's about making it kind of a University of Oregon thing. And even when there's, I, you know, when there's international meets that come into that facility, you know, there's going to be O's all around them, you know? And so it's, it's a, it's a University of Oregon facility. It's an Oregon facility. And so I think that's um, his way of kind of signifying that is that the first group that, you know, really encounters it um, is the, the, University of Oregon track and field team. I agree. And you touched on the next thing I was going to say perfectly. And that was that although like the world championships and the Olympic trials and Prefontaine classic and all these big meets are going to be at Hayward, it's being designed for the Oregon student athletes, like everything in there from the locker rooms, to the team rooms, to the concourse being a track to be able to train on, when obviously there's not meets going on and stuff like that everything is designed for with you guys in mind so carmela like what does that mean to you knowing that it's not just a pretty a pretty picture and it's not just something that looks nice but everything in there is, is functional and designed to help the student athlete get better yeah i think that just the way it was designed it's it's so amazing and um I was talking last day with Helen. I haven't seen it, but uh, there's like a 500 in the top that is like half covered. And we're already thinking like what reps we're gonna do there <laughs> and like what weather is gonna be the best to do up there or be down like at the track. Um, it's definitely really exciting. No other even professional team has a stadium for themselves. Like that just speaks to the, the level of professionality that we have in this team. And that also, I think, it makes you just feel special. Uh, there has been so much history in our team and it makes you feel special and like excited that you can be part of that and like write that story and, 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 and like, I don't know, really create that story of Oregon. Um, so yeah, it's, it's great. <laughs> now I've been talking with some of my former teammates and one thing's for sure is we are, although we're all very excited for you guys, like we're all a little bit jealous because like this thing just looks so cool. But with that being said, like we're, we're making jokes of how like we would have been paying rent up in Eugene for no reason. Cause we would have just been spending all of our time at the track with everything that you guys like have there. So Lexi, like with that being said, like with, like I mentioned all these team rooms and all these locker rooms and like all these spaces for, the whole team to kind of congregate and to like kind of build that team camaraderie. Like what does that do for that kind of that team chemistry aspect outside of practice? I think we as a team already do, you know, the team camaraderie stuff outside of practice. And, you know, we all are, I would say a pretty tight knit team in comparison to a lot of other ones, but having the, facilities to actually go and hang out where we do work also will bring just an entirely new environment to the team and I'm just super excited to see you know what positivity comes from it. Absolutely and Max one thing I thought that was really cool when everything was being built I saw some footage of 
the whole team got to sign a beam that what that went up in Hayward. So everyone's signature is on that and stuff like that. So what does like what's that feel like to know that even when you're gone, when you graduate, like when there's a whole new group of people in there, like your signature and a piece of you will literally always be a part of that stadium. It's very special. That was a very, very special experience. And what I, you know, what was also kind of cool about it was at that phase, that was in this, that was this past fall, you know, it, you could definitely tell that this massive architecture and this whole thing was going up, but details weren't finished yet. And so we were in the middle of the, and it was very much a construction site with all of those hardworking, you know, men and women in there doing all this, this work every day. And it was really impressive, but just to, um, have that opportunity when it was when it was still in that phase to inscribe our names upon it and kind of join this story like we talked about was a, a, a very very unique experience even though that beam isn't I remember one funny thing was that some people were trying to calculate which side would they which side would be visible and find their names on that part you know n none of it's visible to the uh, to the track it's, <laughs> it's hidden under um, everything uh, but it's there that's awesome. I'm sure when you guys are allowed in, like one of the first things, at least someone is going to do is try to go find that beam and see if they can like see, see their signature just a little bit. <laughs> um, okay. So lastly, before, before I let you guys go, we've obviously, we've talked about like the locker room, the team rooms, kind of like all the amenities. And I know there'll be, there's plenty of stuff that you, even you guys don't know is going to be in there. Like there'll be plenty of surprises, but Carmela, I'm going to start with you. And this is going to be a question that all three of you, have so so be thinking about it but what part of what you know is in there so far like what are you most excited about i think what i'm the most excited about um ooh. it's gonna sound like very silly but like just the track and how close it is still to the public um having been in the previous hayward that was just the coolest for it to feel like you can literally touch the athlete while they're running. Uh, so that's what I'm most excited about to be in a competition and like to really hear all the public so loud again, which is an atmosphere that you cannot find anywhere else. So that's what I'm the most excited. Yeah. Absolutely. That, that doesn't sound silly at all. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's part of the magic of Hayward is being able to kind of be right there with the athlete. So, mm -hmm. all right, Lexi, we'll go to you next. What, what are you most excited about? Um, yeah, other than, you know, the crowd and everything, um, probably the, um, just the inside, like the, the heated, uh, I think it's 140 meter track, mm -hmm. and, like the jump pit and everything. Like, I'm just excited to see it and be able to, you know, do work on it. Absolutely. And, and Max, I hope they didn't take your answer, but you're, you're, we're going to go to you last. What is, what are you most excited about? Well, well, somewhat similar to Carmela's answer is about the community, the tremendously special community that we have in Eugene and in the state of Oregon that's so uniquely dedicated to track and field, unlike anywhere else in the U.S. and maybe anywhere else in the world. And to have this kind of cultural mecca to kind of celebrate that, celebrate the history and also kind of point towards this amazing future of, of what our sport can be. Um, right here in Eugene, Oregon, and giving a, you know, a space, like Carmela said, for, you know, these fans and all these community members to be so close to it and to be right in the action and celebrate our sport in that way, I think, I think is going to be totally unprecedented and something, you know, that is going to make a lot of special things happen. I absolutely agree. Well, Everyone is very excited for the track to open, obviously, but we're even more excited to, to get our ducks back in Eugene and being able to see you guys compete. So I wish you nothing but the best in the years to come. Uh, good luck, and thanks for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you. A big thanks again to Track Town USA and the University of Oregon track and field team for having me do that interview. Cannot wait to see that stadium once it opens up, and I love talking about it. I hope you all enjoyed it as well. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any more of these episodes, and follow the Instagram at beyond underscore the uniform. And don't forget, every athlete has a story. You just have to listen. I'll see you next time. This has been Beyond the Uniform with TJ Brass. Join me again next week as another special guest joins the show.